No. Hello, everybody. Don't ask me. I just hey, work here. At least we had a really <laughs> productive day without this crap happening. Because <laughs> considering... We did. we did how many pages today? A lot. <clears throat> many, many pages. Hello, all. Welcome to Trek Yards and Nick from Star Trek Intrepid slash Star Trek Intrepid slash Intrepid slash Hidden Frontier. I already said all this, but... They but they could... Been... <laughs> Hi. We're back again. Uh... All right. So... Hi, hit like, guys. Now Another I'll share. Week. Are you done sharing? No, now I can share because now it's on to share. It's working. Oh, now I can start again with the spiel. Oh, you awesome. can. All right. Well, guys, you know the routine. Hit that like button. Don't forget to make sure that you're sending super chats. Great way to get your voice heard, your question answered, voice and support buttons. the channel. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And by all means... Um, if you want to join the channel, you can do that as well. It's a monthly way to help us out. It's not very much a month, depending on what tier you pick. And you can get your own rank and be really cool and be like us. Be really cool. Oh, yeah. I'm outnumbered by captains here. So, yeah. I'm yeah, captains yeah, in the chat, too. We're, we're, we're Star Trek fans. Did you just say we're cool? <laughs> yes. We're, we are the coolest of the cool. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll take that. I'll you, take it. Look at the thumbnail. <clears throat> two different uniforms. I do and don't cool forget, guys, you can send PayPal as well. If you do, just let us know in the regular chat mm -hmm. that you sent it. It's trekyards at hotmail.com. The information is down in the description of every video. So if you let us, if you do that, if you do send a PayPal, let us know, and we will read your comment or question via the email from PayPal. Mm -hmm. PayPal. And I think Samuel's done sharing now. I am. Yes. Hard to tell, Sweet. everyone. But yes, Sweet. we had to have questions for Nick because he's actually in studio. The second ever guest in studio live. Yes. Uh, well, right I mean, I've there. been there, and your dad's been there, so... Yes. So third. Third. But, 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 but Stuart's not a guest. He is the other half of me. Well, that's true. That's true. See? I knew Better what I was doing. What? Yeah, you heard me. But not a band account throws in $2. This captain looks like he's straight out of TV. Oh. I think Ooh, they're talking to you, you, Nick. Yeah. We're straight out of YouTube. And he's straight out of TV. Straight out of Pizza Hut, but yeah. <laughs> Pizza Hut's good. It was actually not a we band had Domino's account. tonight. It was good, but you know, Pizza Hut came to mind first. <laughs> not a band account. Two dollars, Commander. Have you tried inverting the tachyon beams? Because that always. Well, we did reverse the polarity. Well, you did. We did reverse the polarity. Yeah, yes. he did. Yep. Like five. Like I've five. already forgotten that line, thankfully. Um, <laughs> God, how many lines do you think I've made you say today? Oh no, my head is sore. No, um, many, many lines. Um, Twenty um, plus pages of lines yeah. we've done today. Yeah, 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 so. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been a kind of fan film making machine today. And for um, me, three days. For Sam, three days. And we're doing a fourth day tomorrow because I'm an idiot. But, you know. <clears throat> yeah. Good to know. Good so to know. <laughs> when, when we decided to do this, because Sam had written um, this film that I'm in uh, with the intention that I would shoot my bits up there and we'd composite it all together. And yeah, then I said, look, you know, why don't I just come down to you? It's, you know. Why Nick, I gotta say I just before you continue, you. before you continue, I gotta say nobody wants to see your bits, so don't be shooting your bits and my bits, my bits, your bits, your bits shooting and your bits up north. Ah, yeah. And anyway, shooting funny. my funny. scenes. Um, <laughs> well, it depends on your demographic. There are people, you know, we'll true. not go there actually. That is true. Uh, anyway, Sam, the original plan was we would shoot my scenes up in Dundee, mm -hmm. as we um, did for Longing from Home. As we have done with the one we did already. Um, and I thought, and I said to Sam, it's like, you know, why don't I just come down? Because it'll just make things more easy. Sam and I, um, Marcus and I can bounce off each other. It would just... Well, no, because the original film, that was you and Robin. Oh, yeah, good point. That was, yeah. Anyway, we can all bounce off each other. We can do it at your place. It's just going to be easier for all in one place. You can direct us because it's so much easier if you're just there to direct us. Mm -hmm. So we agreed that I would come down and... Sam had been talking about wanting to direct something for Intrepid, and we kind of discussed this a little bit. For had, yeah. Yeah, so, and we had, yeah. like, what, two or three weeks ago? Three weeks ago? For what? That we talked about that story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. literally. So we, yeah. Came up with a, we came up with a very rough idea for a story with, that basically is... Good, though. Hunter, Good. through various points in his career, visits this planet, never Which remembers... Him, by the way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> my character is Hunter. Um, doesn't remember having been there, and then just keeps revis revisiting the same thing. Uh, and it kind of found it fun and quirky. So, um, yeah, so I had to write that between then and now. Um, well, how many have I written between then and now? Yeah, I know, but my <laughs> writing process is different to yours. It is. It is. Anyway, so I wrote that. So that's that's about 12 pages. So we still have to shoot 
the green screen scenes for that tomorrow. Mm-hmm. The other scenes Sam's going to come to mm. Scotland and shoot those mm-hmm. outdoors. But the green screen scenes, which are all kind of shuttle interiors, mm-hmm. are going to be shot here. Mm-hmm. So we have to shoot that tomorrow. Um, we also have to shoot some stuff for another 10-page short that Sam decided to write. Tell us that story of what happened with that surprise. That happy surprise. When I'm did sure. you tell me this? Because I actually can't even remember. You hammered so many lines into my head this in the last 12 hours. I'm not sure I even um, remember that story. On the walk back from the Indian. Oh, yeah. On the walk back from the Indian, he told me he had another short for me to do, which has got about you when, know, when did 10 I write to 12 it? pages uh, yesterday. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, so that that will be interesting and fun. So we've got about five or six hours before I need to hit the road and get to the airport, so I don't miss my flight. So we have a tight window tomorrow. We'll do it. We'll do Achievably it. Achievably tight. It's achievable. We got through a lot today, mm-hmm. um, and my script, I, I've written it with very much in a mind to making it easy to shoot. As did I, I. I have not given myself, like you know, paragraphs of dialogue to memorize it's kind of like short snippets so Mm -hmm. i think the chances we'll get through stuff my stuff tomorrow good and then we'll get to sam's stuff and hopefully we'll kind of Mm -hmm. i hope ham through we've done a little bit of that tonight actually Mm -hmm. um with me talking to myself in different costumes Mm. which was interesting will look cool though i hope it'll look cool yeah so we are playing some Sergeant Trippet. I think believe your latest film. This is our latest one, which has yeah, been out for a little while now. Mm-hmm. And actually, I, I say this with every film we put out because I think we get better every time. And I'm not suggesting for a minute that we're like amazing <laughs> or we are the pinnacle of storytelling or filmmaking well, or anything are, like that. So. We're not. Um, you know, we're a fan film. That's what we are. S- but I, I think we get better every one. And every film we make is kind of my new favourite. And this one is definitely my favorite today i think it's a nice i think it's the best story i've done Mm. uh i think it's some of our better performances it looks good i really enjoyed making it and uh there's a lot there's a couple of new faces in it so it 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 was a lot of fun to do so i'm really proud of this one for all its you know flaws and it has its flaws um i'm really proud of the work we did on this one and how much work people put into it uh and there's some really pretty pretty phenomenal visuals from Sam in there as well because oh, um which helps sell it a lot the original cut for this there's a voiceover into this that I did which mm-hmm. wasn't originally in there mm-hmm. so the original edit of this mm-hmm. I showed it to one of our guys who's done effects work for us in the past and occasionally acts Martin Lejeune um who lives down in Bristol and he often looks at my early edits and I sent the first cut down to him and he kind of went, as Martin does, because he's, he's kind of a fun, quirky guy. And he said, oh, it's, I like it. Uh, it needs a voiceover. He doesn't sound like that. I don't know why I'm putting a funny voice on. I do these things all the time. But yeah, he went, oh, it needs a voiceover. Yeah, I guess you're right. Um, and it helps with the exposition a little mm. bit. So I then spent the next, I don't know, 10 weeks trying to write this voiceover. Because no matter what I did, I just wasn't happy with it. I, it took me a long time to get to a place where I had a voiceover I was happy with. And I think, actually, it turned out really well. Um, this scene here was uh, fun to shoot, actually. Well, I have a question for Hello. Stuart. While you guys put some questions in, guys. And we have a couple. I want to ask Stuart a question. we got two Super Chats and another question I want to read. Okay, so Super Chats. What's, what's your question? Okay, well, yeah, guys, put in questions. We want to know. Stuart, when was the first time you heard about Intrepid or saw it, if you have any memory uh... of it? Any memory. Like, first memory of it probably a few years ago when you mentioned it um i don't even remember um it's like that scene in 1984 where they tie the guy into the chair and pin his eyes open and make him watch stuff uh, it's kind of like that i think i've got this image <laughs> no 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 uh, it's a few years ago samuel introduced he's laughing there's some truth to that <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i mean I've, I've really enjoyed what i've seen so far and i love the crossover ideas that you guys are doing mm. so I think that's great pulling all the fan films together. I'm fair so. to say it's, you, you're equally as I am refreshed by seeing this sort of uniform. It's like, yeah, yeah show me more. TOS is yeah. great, but can I see more of these? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, exactly. It, it's interesting because I grew up as an original series fan and it's funny seeing all the acrimony in fandom lately with this show is terrible. I hate this show. It's not Star Trek. You know, I went through that in the 80s with TNG. I was, I was an original series fan and, you know, 
and I first saw TNG, it's like, this is terrible, this is not my Star Trek, this is horrible, I hate this, you're monsters! And, you know, after a few years, TNG really became kind of my favourite show, and became my show. I mean, I was a child when I watched the original series, and I kind of went through childhood with it, but TNG was kind of my adulthood. So, yeah, I mean, TNG and the shows that have come after that, kind of Voyager, Deep Space Nine, even Enterprise... Um, and the TNG movies, that's kind of my era. For a lot of people, it's original series. I totally get that. For me, it's all the TNG era stuff. So this is this is my um, my comfort, warm blanket, whatever you want to call it. Mm. Um, yeah, this is my happy place. Nice. Stuart, questions? Excellent. For our fan <laughs> one of the first, not some questions. So, Ozzy, $5, Superior Commander, did you put Badgy in the bridge? I think he means brig. Federation president skilled in the end. No, but it wouldn't be hard to do that. At least you got to get a good voice. And by oh, yeah, Nick Ozzy is one of our Federation presidents. We Ooh. have three, so you might want to give a, a little salute to camera. Welcome, Ozzy. Live long and prosper. Pres president, president Ozzy. President Ozzy. President. So yes. Welcome, President Ozzy. Live long and prosper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not a band account. Two dollars. Is Captain Hunter versed in the art of Kirk Fu? Captain Hunter is versed in the art of. Running over away his from feet <laughs> um, Yes and no. It would not be his preferred. Pre Hunter, if you if you've ever watched Indiana Jones, and there's a scene in Indiana Jones where the guy comes in with a sword and he's ah, 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 and Indy takes out his gun and just shoots the guy. That's Hunter's idea of a fight. <laughs> mm, it's like perfect. nah, nah, zap, bye. Fight smarter, not harder. Mm. Absolutely. And make puns and jokes at yeah. some time. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. yes. It's a I Captain Foley like thing to make the puns and the jokes. Nice. Puns and jokes are uh, good. Feed Me Seymour says, where was the wood, were these woods, wooded scenes filmed? So the wooded scenes were filmed in a place called Danino Den, or most of them were. This particular scene that's on just now was actually filmed on Canoole Hill, which is just outside Perth. Mm. And there's an old monk's tower at the top of that hill. Um, it's a very pretty spot. This, yeah. however, is Danino Den, so the transition there was to another area. We had originally planned to shoot it all up at Danino, all up at Canoole Hill, but the weather that day was so bad, it was so windy, we had to abandon it. And then we found when we went back to return shooting, we kind of thought, well, let's find somewhere a little bit more visually interesting. And this area is just really nice because it's just this little magical glen type of area. Um, it's supposed to be a kind of druids area, so there's some druidic hmm. activity and stuff there. And there's actually a little, um, there's all sorts of carvings into the rock and there's things hanging from trees and stuff. It's kind of a cool place. Um, and I'm actually planning to shoot something else there soon. Nice. Actually, on Friday. <laughs> nice. That's real soon. Nice. That is real soon, yeah. But it's a lovely spot, and uh, I've been back since there, actually. And how many dog walkers and such did you meet while well, it shooting? Well, wa it, it wasn't too bad, actually. We did have a few people. Because it's not... It's a little bit off the beaten path mm -hmm. at Danino, but it is somewhat well-known, so people do travel there to see the shrine and stuff. There's a shrine there, and there's a little well. So people do travel there. So we did have some issues with that, and there was a couple of points where people were walking through, and we had kind of had to stop and wait. And then they would stop and they would have conversations there mm. while we were waiting. Um, but, you know, mostly it wasn't too bad. We didn't have a lot of interruptions. So it's just, it's a good spot. It's certainly better than some of the other mm. spots we've shot in where we have had a lot of issues of people walking through um, and inter in and just, just holding things up. When we shot The Stone Unturned, which is when Giles Aston appeared for playing Captain Picard, we had a scene out in the country and really, we constantly have people walking through with dog walkers then. And the interesting thing, because we had a Patrick Stewart lookalike there, I think there were a few double takes. Mm. Um, well, in uniform, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, that that was fun. And obviously, today we had Lander and dog walkers and Lander and well, all sorts of people. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. The Lander and stroller, Stuart. I'll be on, on camera, I'm sure. <laughs> No, um, we filmed that, really. There's a lady. Yeah. We're filming a scene with Marcus outside, and a lady in a stroller walked by. And it's like, yeah. yep, that's in the shop. Yeah. There you go. Which nice, actually helps nice. add context to that film. So Just you know, add like a nice. hover, uh, add like <laughs> hover field effect underneath the stroller. Rotoscope and razor two inches to the ground. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. Like that. um, 
Zach says, I, this is from earlier um, when you know, the phaser fight was going on, as I doesn't think a tree stump would protect you against a phaser. Now, that's a very interesting point. Ah, interesting now. Interesting question. The tree stump, that's because it wasn't a phaser. Ah, if see. If you watch you the go, film, uh, it's like, the reason it's not a phaser, it's fake phaser fire. It's holographic. Oh. That's the gag there. Have you watched the film? Because <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, Hunter looks at the tree and goes, that phaser fire is not doing anything to it. And then mm -hmm. he steps up, and then the fake phaser beam hits him, and he's like, uh ah. Good gag. Mm -hmm. Spoilers. Well, if you're well, watching we'll it, you watch it, you'll catch that. Yeah. You'll catch that. Well, we're having a conversation, so I wouldn't expect you to be paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Neat. Yeah, nice details. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, Feed Me Seymour asks, what camera do you use to film? Um, we have up to recently, and certainly up to this film, been filming on a Canon 450D. Oh, wow. I think. Old it's, school. Uh, so we're just filming in HD. Uh, it's Steve Hammond's camera. He is our cameraman, and ostensibly he's directed most of our films. I did do this one, but Steve's directed the majority, and um, certainly our first film, which, and you have to give all credit to him, on our first film, where we had pretty much no idea what we were doing. Now we have slightly less of no idea what we're doing. But I mean, he directed, he did the camera, he edited, he did all the chroma key work. Um, well, you're giving so much credit as yeah. if your team is important. Well, the team is important. It is important. And, um, an you know, we, we, we couldn't have made that first film without Steve, to be honest. Um, but I, as we've gone along, it's become more and more of a teamwork effort and there's people kind of all over the world contributing to this film. I mean, Sam down here in, um, where are Bedford. We? Bedford, I blanked on it. Sam right down here now. in Bedford is doing, I know, <laughs> is doing effects work for us and obviously we're collaborating on stuff. We've got Jen Carling, who's also in England. She does work for us. Martin Lejeune does work for us. Um, Bodo Hartwig in Germany has done sound work, does, has done sound work for us. He's also done music for us. Um, people in the States doing stuff for us. Jeff Hayes has done poster art for us. Mm. Um, Jamie Avalos in in Australia has done work for us. I mean, he'd done posters for us. He's done matte work. He, he did this beautiful matte painting mm, for a film yes, we did yeah. called The Story, which we used instead of like, you know, you know a traditional matte painting for an effect shot. Um, so there's so many people all over the place who contribute to this and it really has become such a massive team effort and there's people I'll be missing so I'm really sorry to anybody who've missed off the list there um, but it's such such a team effort uh, and, and it really wouldn't happen without that team and that's one of the key things for making a fan film you need you need someone that's kind of kind of push it forward and that's got a kind of overarching vision for what they want to do and often is the motivator for people doing it but without a team of people that are willing to support you and make it happen, it doesn't go anywhere. I mean, I tend to be the guy that pushes these things forward and, and wants to make them for the most part. But it's the people that come along that let me make it. If I didn't have all these people around me, there's no way I could make these films. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd be, you know, filming monologues to my webcam in my office probably. And, well, you know, and but at least in good costumes. Be it. Well, in good it costume, reminds guess, me of my, yeah. my captain's log, just me sitting there talking to the camera for however long. Um, yeah. yeah. And you're obviously <laughs> watching some of this, Stuart, as well. You know, yeah. there's one thing I always like about Trevor is their costuming is, is as close to top notch as you can get. At what point, Stuart, yeah. are you watching this and, and the costuming and the fact that Nick looks good in costume kind of pulls you into fan film versus home movie? Like, is that, you know, as many scenes cross that line, do you think? I would say so, yeah. I mean, I think the I really like what he's wearing there, actually, with the open, with the open. Uh, sh that looks great. That's, that's um, one of the things I really like about that particular costume is it has layers to it, and it's just more interesting to wear. Yeah, and you you made your own costumes originally. Well, that you? originally yes, that one is not one I made. That's an Anovos standard line. Um, the one I've got here with me this weekend is one I've made. But, you know, I've, most of the costumes we use in the production I've made, certainly most of the ones for our cast I've made over the years, um, you know, some of them are slightly better and slightly more accurate than others. And there's been a variety of different fabrics I've used. So the yokes don't always match up color wise, but the construction of them is pretty much the same across the board. And in fact, you kind of 
took an accidental hiatus from doing costuming for a while, and then I, think, oh, I guess my oh, one yeah, was the yeah. first one he tweaked, yeah. and I've made, um, like, four since. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's the same with anything. I mean, if you do something a lot, it becomes tedious and less fun. And I've made, yeah. out of costumes, I mean, between First Contacts, Voyager, slash DS9 costumes, TNG costumes, I mean, I've made dozens of these things over the years and you do get really fed up of it uh i am really fed up of it you don't i know because I, I asked you for one you're like no uh, right. I, i'm uh, <laughs> you know i, I, I would never true. absolutely say no to you stuart but at the moment i'm just not in a position to do it and the main actually the main reason i said no to you i cannot work off of measurements yeah i just can't work off yeah. of measurements yeah, if i've got right. someone and i said this when i was adjusting your costume as well if it I've was got, good though you did good I did as good as I, it could have been better. But well, when I've got someone in front of me and I can fit it to them, I'm fine. If I have to work off measurements, I just can't do it. I mean, I taught myself to sew with the machine. So there's limits. I have my limitations. Uh, and there's a couple of things I've had to do recently. I've had to go on YouTube and watch some instructional videos because like, how do I do that? I have mm. no idea. Yeah, so it's an ongoing process. But yeah, I have started getting back into it a little bit recently. I really do want to make myself one of the Picard flashback uniforms, mm-hmm. uh, but I want to tweak the design slightly because mm-hmm. yeah, I want to do a captain's variant. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, that's, yeah. And um, yes. We're going to super chat. Uh, Squadron course, $2. Yay for fan films. We appreciate your hard work. And, so. and Max World Entertainment, who he knows says, oh, wow. Is Nick there with <laughs> Sam? Yes. Ow, my oh, head. they <laughs> love each other. <laughs> well, I was just drawing your camera. There you go to my camera. Look. This is very good green screen. It's live. Very, very just, good green screen. I'll just leave you guys alone. Even color balancing differently. Look. No, yeah. please don't leave us alone. That's kind of, you know. Oh, he de- He never leaves oh. me alone. He's always in my you head. Like, He's always in my stomach. You like an audience, eh? I get it. I get it. No, <laughs> no, no. Well, I, yeah, I'm not even going to go there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got, I got a question I got to ask. Yeah. Um, you're here to talk about fan films. You're kind of one of the founding fa- fathers of uh, well, fan films. Well, he's your, your second gen. I, yes. Yeah, Second I mean, I wouldn't. And you're call, still going. Which I is wouldn't important. call myself a founding father by any well, stretch of the imagination. Ones. But I mean, I'm certainly the founding fathers to me. The first video is 13 years ago. Yeah, from so, that from that time period. I mean, let's play a video of how you looked 13 years uh, ago. Uh, that was there yeah. is. Yeah, the question That's is how we be, When did you start? When did you start all this? But, I mean, we start, started. We started working on this stuff back in 2003. Oh, look, look so oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually fatter there. Yeah, you lost a lot of weight. Yeah. yeah. Um, you not... couldn't even comb your hair. <laughs> well, that, I, I, keep so my, just... I keep my hair shorter now. So, yeah. you know, because I have less of it. So it, it looks better <laughs> if I keep... And I've got more white. The white is less obvious. I'm not oh. like Steve. Steve has gone completely grey now. Oh, has he? Anyway, I got into fan films largely because of Exeter and Hidden Frontier. Those were the two... And I mean, at the time, they were pretty much it because they were only two... And that certainly, Steve with, was very much interested. And Tales of the Seventh Fleet, because they were around about that time as well. Um, not to forget them, because I mean, they were they were in that first that first wave of fan films. And to me, you know, Hidden Frontier and Exeter really are the kind of forefathers of the current generation of fan films. Um, and I mean, there were fan films before that, but they were the kind of and and I'll say Star Trek fan films because there's other types of fan films, but. There were Star Trek fan films before Hidden Frontier, but they weren't well known. They weren't so widespread. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So Hidden Frontier and Exeter kind of kicked off this current generation of fan films. So I kind of came along in the second generation. So I came off the back of Hidden Frontier and Exeter. And to be fair, when I first saw Hidden Frontier, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't convinced that this was like, nah, I don't know if this works. Uh, and then I watched Exeter, the Savage Empire, and that really pulled me in. And that made me go back and watch more Hidden Frontier. And then I got really into Hidden Frontier. And obviously myself and some of our friends were talking about doing an audio novel because it hadn't occurred to us that we could do a fan film. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my friends spoke up, Dylan Feeney, who actually composed our theme. And he said, well, why not do a fan film? And I went, why not? Hidden Frontier turn out six a year. How hard could that be? <laughs> it's really hard. Okay. And I see this a lot. People go, ah, as I did. How hard could that be? They did that. 
It's really hard. It's hard. It's really hard. Especially when it's only five on uh, one weekend. Yeah, it's, five real, four days. It, it's really hard work. And it's difficult. And especially if you have no idea what you're doing from the get-go. I mean, we had to learn a lot as we were going. Anyway, out of that, I ended up making a lot of friends with people like, you know, Robert Hidden Frontier. I kind of got somewhat involved with Phase 2 because James Corley asked me to come and do a small role in Blood and Fire. Um, I got to know the Johnson brothers a little bit, but then not online and... You know, I still speak to Josh Johnson a little bit. Um, so anyway, they were very much influential to me when I was making fan films. And, um, you know, Tales of the Seventh Fleet as well. There were some other ones that came up around that time that actually started and didn't go anywhere. Uh, which is a shame because, you know, I think there were a lot of interesting ideas out there. But as I said, it's really hard to do these things. And a lot, and it's not even, even if you have the determination and you're prepared to put the hard work in, Often a lot of other things can come along that really will, really will knock you off. I mean, real life can knock you off kilter for doing these things. And if you want to book people, one thing can scout to do one thing, one thing. Yeah. And now you're... It's it's really difficult. Gracie G, though. Very creative. Ah, that was that was Lee Andrew. Lee Andrew. Um, well, briefly... did a lot of our early CG. Not a band of cats. Does Captain Hunter have a love I was, interest? I was, I just, no. Oh, you got... I was going to make a joke out of that, and you screwed it up. Okay. I was going to say... Stuart, not I a think you have a question. Yes, not a band account wants to swipe right and is wondering if Captain Hunter has a love interest. Captain Hunter does have a love interest, and it would be Admiral Shelby from Hidden Frontier. Which I happened to have a clip. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that wasn't even like deliberate, that's hardly. Which also, I, I, I know Rob is working on trying to do a revival of Hidden Frontier, and I've read Ooh. the... Uh, I've read the scripts for it, and there is some Hunter Shelby stuff in there. <gasps> yeah. <gasps> it, it, it continues along oh. the will they, won't they thing. Yeah. That's a little spoiler there. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I've wor having worked with Risha quite a bit, I really... Risha is a blast. I love working with her. We always bounce off every each other very well. And actually, that whole chemistry thing between Hunter and Shelby, that was all Risha. I mean, I didn't really... Yeah. I, I thought wrote... I was gay and she came on to me and I'd change me. <laughs> I wrote that scene as a little crossover in our first episode and they were, you know, Rob and Risha were very kind enough to say, and, and she brought a real kind of spark to that, that, you know, I thought it would be a bit cheeky and a bit fun, but I didn't see that kind of chemistry kind of spark there. And every time we did a kind of crossover with Hidden Frontier and I worked with Risha, we went more and more down that line. So yeah, I mean, that is certainly a love interest of sorts for Hunter, whether it's more Hunter's thing than hers. Well, who knows? Anyway, um, her thing with Calhoun in Hidden Frontier didn't really work out. Um, Stuart, nice question. Well, uh, we got a few questions from Matt Boardman, but the first one is a super chat of $5, so thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. He says, you, Nick, Matt. how much fun has it been to watch technology change since you started and being able to use it to tell the stories you tell better as a result? You know, Which, before you answer, mm -hmm. considering where you started, today we use Blackmagic 6K. Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, Matt, that, that has been absolutely phenomenal because, I mean, when we started, we had, you know, it was Steve's Canon camcorder. And I mean... Not camera, camcorder. Camcorder. That's a distinct difference. Mm -hmm. So he was mm -hmm. recording on mini v DV tape. Mm -hmm. Hard drive space was re hard drives were really expensive and storage space was at premium. We ca Steve captured and edited that film at five hundred and twelve resolution, so five twelve by two eighteen or something like that. Mm. So not even standard definition, and that's what he edited as because edited at because you know there just wasn't the storage space for him. And you can see the uh, uh, yeah. editing blur. So yeah. that that the and now I mean. We've still up to recently been shooting on Steve's Canon 450. But I mean, I've got a 4K camera. Um, the guy that's coming along to do camera for us on Friday, he's got 4K gear. Uh, the downside to this is mm -hmm. how bad we are at makeup is even more obvious. So <laughs> you'll notice we've not done a lot of makeup <coughs> recently. Yeah. Um, and also the aging and the white hairs are a lot more obvious. Especially um, I make you play 20 years younger yeah. in 6K. Yeah, I know. Um, what was I thinking? <laughs> what was I thinking? But, but the technology is so much better now. Even down to like doing the green screen work, that is a lot e I'm not going to say a lot easier, but you can get better results now than we did before. Uh, the software is more intuitive as well because, you know, even the kind of the basic kind of automatic stuff doesn't do a bad job. You still need to tweak it stuff. And that's not, that is not my area. But... Um, 
yeah, the, the technology has become along, come along incredibly. And actually the technology for delivery, because YouTube was fairly new when a lot of this mm. stuff started. I mean, Hidden Frontier didn't have their stuff even on YouTube mm. initially. You wasn't, know, you had yeah, to download the QuickTime files yeah. from their website. Um, and then laterally they were on YouTube. By the time we brought out our first episode, you know, we did put it on YouTube, but we also had it downloadable from our website. And we did that for subsequent years. Now, I mean, there's no point doing that. You, you put it on YouTube, you put it on Vimeo, you put it on any kind of streaming service. So the delivery network for these things is much broader. And actually the audience is much bigger because mm. YouTube has a huge audience. But, you know, you only really get the big audiences if you like the fan films with like sets and professional actors and all that kind of jazz. So, I mean, our, I mean, our most recent film has had 55,000 views, which for us is really, for really film, good. That's good, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, normally we sit around the kind of between them, you know, anything from three to 8,000 views. I don't know. We don't promote it, to be fair. We don't promote it much because, I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we're a fan film. We don't have any kind of blown up opinion of we're like these great actors and creators and producers. Um, you know, we do this for fun. Well, I do it for fun. Um, some of the I actors... do for the babes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not allowed to do that. I'm married. Um, yeah, I'm clearly joking too. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, I I am taken and spoken for, and uh, yeah. Anyway, um... <laughs> I think we're going to talk you a bit too long. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, next question. What was my point? I don't know what my point I, was. Yeah, no point. It's Joe. Next question. Matt again asks, what has been your favorite episode you've done? And outside of your own, what are your favorite groups to work with? Oh, well, I, further to what I said earlier, my favorite of my own work is pretty much always the latest thing I've done, to be honest. Um, so my my favorite to date is A Treasure for the Ages. I do think it's our best film. Um, beyond that, I have a real soft spot for the story, which not a lot of people get. I like it. I like that last Im imagery at the end um, of the map painting. I really, really like Nemo, Me and Pune Necessit. Lecessit, not Necessit. Nemo, Me and Pune Lecessit, um, which is just a fun, which I, I think is just a fun story and I like it. And actually, I think I'm not too bad in it. Uh, and um, Leo Tierney did an amazing job of mm -hmm. making our really bad, really badly lit green screen footage look good. Um, he, he did a phenomenal job of that so I would like to see that get more views because I think that's actually a pretty solid film mm -hmm. um, and after that I'm going to have to say Duty of Care which I'm in only very briefly which is a good thing um, but I have two actors in that that I one of whom in fact both of whom I knew from one of my acting classes and they came along did that and I think they both turned in really good performances it's a solid script I guess I would say that because I wrote it um, but I like the story I'm a nurse and the protagonist in that is a nurse. Um, mm. So it was a little tip of the hat to my profession there. And um, that's a story I'm really fond of and really quite close to. All right. Next mm. question. Another Matt Boardman question. This is a good one considering his track yards. Mm. Nick, why did you choose the Intrepid class as your starship? And why the Intrepid? Like, that's the, that's the class ship. That is a very good question. So I... I, I, I did swither on this quite a lot and I had a lot of different ideas for where I was going to go with this. But at the time, I wanted a smaller ship um, and I really liked Voyager. It is one of my favorite ship designs, uh, basically because I just liked the ship. It was one of my favorites. I wanted a smaller ship with a smaller crew. Uh, I wanted them to be a little bit not the best crew. Clearly. Yeah. Um, so I didn't want them on a galaxy class or a sovereign class. I wanted a smaller... I want something a little more original series in tone, hmm. but also a little bit more light and fun. Uh, and yeah, I just like the ship. It is, I don't know if it's my favorite Starfleet ship, but it's certainly it's certainly high up there. Uh, and also Voyager wasn't long off the air, I guess. And mm -hmm. I was like Voyager. And I just like the ship. So I picked it. Um, why the class ship? You know, I don't think there's any, we, we bandied around a few different names. Um, Pathfinder was one of them. Mm. And I think, ah, oh, what was the other one? Pioneer. Pioneer was up there. That's and a good one. It is a good one. And I was actually really close to using Pioneer. But I don't know, there was something about Intrepid. Uh, and I remember Steve had commented at one point that he'd wrote a comic when he was younger. Or he'd written something when he was younger called The Intrepids. 
so yeah just kind of thought actually you know i really like it let's just go with it and it had some it had it was a legacy ship as well because obviously it'd been an intrepid in the original series the be intrepid mm. that Worf's adopted father had served on Sergei Ruzhenko and Nemesis and Nemesis and it appeared in Nemesis in the Operation Retrieve was it Operation Retrieve ba- Battle Group Omega yep Battle Group Omega schematic so it was USS Intrepid NCC 74600 yep. so we thought you know what that's kind of a nice little thing so we were in there let's just go with Intrepid so and I you know well, the Worf's really, dad obviously wouldn't have been the same Intrepid no it's not the same Intrepid obviously so what it, class that would have been then it was Excelsior class that wasn't Excelsior. We even know oh, the right. registration. It was three yeah. eight, three eight nine oh seven. I think hmm. it was three something. Anyway, I feel like I should write you a short where you go to that Intrepid. <laughs> Just wake up on that. That would that be cool? You wake up the wrong Intrepid. Yeah. Do you ever have the Khan costume? Not, uh, no. <laughs> oh my God! Try put in mine live on oh, stage no. and let's see how my oh, six foot no. uniform. Yeah, I'm gonna do that actually. I actually do have one that's kind of partly finished, but you know, <laughs> let's see if it fits my rather not. Uh, well, I'm not uh, next, sk- next I am not as skinny as you. I know. You're the next not. question that's is. Is there a history behind choosing the name Hunter for your captain? Yes, I have been asked this question before. And question? Is there a history behind the name Hunter? Oh, there yes, there is. So, twofold. I um, I grew up in the 80s. So, in the 80s, there was a lot of 80s shows that I watched. And one of them was the absolutely phenomenal Hill Street Blues. Um, one of the characters on Hill Street Blues was Howard Hunter, who was a bit of a dick. Um, but I kind of liked him. And I like the name Hunter, so that was the name I used. And Daniel, Daniel comes from Stargate. And mm. Hunter is very, very, very loosely based on a bit of a cross between Jack O'Neill and... Um, Jack O'Neill. Jack O'Neill, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, Daniel from Stargate and Hunter from Hill Street Blues. Nice, nice. I can't get my arm in there. Where's the sleeve? Where's the Ah, oh, it's there. Okay. Ah, oh, you pulled the headphone out. Oh. <laughs> um, I can't believe you're doing while this. While you're trying that yeah, on, Phoebe Seymour says, when in the timeline... Okay, I'm going to take that off for a minute because... Okay, so you talk to the chat. Oh, fine. Oh, actually. No, it really so guys, shouldn't fit you because it barely fits my, my shoulders and I'm much... We've got 49 likes. I'm sure we can get your shoulders. That'll be easy. One more like. Um, or we can we'll get up to 75. Try to hit the 75 than... mark. Hit the like button if you haven't. Yeah. Because if you fit into this, over people. maybe I could do it. Uh, so that'd be kind of fun, yeah. though, wouldn't it? I ain't um, doing that this week. Sports Supercast, we greatly appreciate the possible show you'll have for me. Right tonight. Um, <laughs> I have a plane to catch. Uh, if you haven't checked out, that'd be hilarious. Trip, Walker's means, like, right, I wrote you a full page. There's some really great stories. So, as you can see, plane beside us. Actually, as much. Going back to another question earlier about favorite episodes, uh, I do really like The Stone Unturned, which is what's playing at the moment, um, mainly because A, I didn't write it, and it's just a nice story, and B, having someone playing Picard in it, was that's not going to fasten, <laughs> was really nice. So it was really nice to have Hunter meet Picard, and actually, they don't get on. Hunter thinks no. he's a dick, and Picard thinks he's an idiot. I mean, arguably, they're both right. Arguably, they are both right. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. Hunter meets Picard and thinks and doesn't like him. And you're one of the few fan films to use a, her- a legendary captain. Actually. True. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, I really like that. Interesting story about not this scene, but Giles Giles came up, and I mean, this film really does revolve around him. And so, his accent. And his, ac- <laughs> and, and his accent. Um, so he had to learn a lot of dialogue, and... By the end of the weekend, we had one scene to film. It was a scene with a lot of exposition. And I stand up, keep talking. It was it was Giles had to turn towards me. Wait, you keep talking. Giles had to deliver all that dialogue. <laughs> you know that actually does fit. Keep um, so Giles had to deliver all that. The sleeves are a bit long. Giles had to deliver all that dialogue. <laughs> Sorry, Giles was what? wrecked. Giles had to deliver all that dialogue, and he was wrecked. So he really struggled. So we ended up having to feed him lines. Um, oh from sitting opposite him while he's sat in his chair and he would just yep, try so. and deliver them. So it was a real struggle. And, um, yeah, you know, actually, it doesn't look too bad. Look too bad. Maybe You're missing the turtleneck, though. you got, like, yeah, a jack pressure. Yeah, I'll give it a second. I have one. Anyway, um, so... <laughs> Where was I? Anyway, so when it came to cutting that episode together, Steve just could not... Steve edited that one. He could not make that scene work because we just didn't have u- enough usable takes. 
Uh, and there were some dialogue problems with sound recording and stuff like that. So we ended up having to wait a long, long time to get Jazz to do ADR. But to make like that... over a year, wasn't it? Was oh, no, it was like two or three years. Oh. So I actually ended up having to rewrite that scene from the dialogue we could use. And actually, I think it turned out better because the scene as it was was very long, very exposition-y. And what we eventually got, got the same, the same information over, but it was shorter and less kind of like, you know, exposition. So, you know, it worked pretty well. And that scene, which was a bit of a train wreck, actually, in the end of the day, worked. Um, well, maybe it worked. I guess it's up to the person watching it whether they think it worked or not. Um, but it worked for me. Boy, you guys really just saw a live, a live learning here. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, so yeah, when in the timeline was this meant to be set? When are the timelines Intrepid set? In general, I guess. So, Intrepid's first episode was ostensibly set around about 28, a couple of years after Nemesis. So around about 2381, 2382, I think it was 2382. But we've kind of vaguely retconned it all. Oh, you want me to put that on now? Well, okay. see, see how hard the timeline is. Just keep talking. Just, just ignore if I do live costumes. Yeah, so just early twenty three eighties. Since then, I haven't actually paid too much attention to the timeline. I just make short stories, and they'll well, fit I in where they fit. Made you be a bit more consistent because we kind of haven't blinked. Well, you have. Yeah, I have had to come up with some star dates today. Yes, but that's okay. You, you know, when, when I first started doing fan films, I was quite concerned about these things and getting minutia like star dates and where, what year is this, and I, and you know. As I've got more into the kind of making these films and just telling stories, I've become less interested in that kind of minutia. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong one way or the other. For me, that's less interesting now than just telling a good story and not worrying about stuff like that. Um, you know, sometimes I put star dates in things and more often than not, I don't. <laughs> that's a bit tight, but it's not too bad. It looks like a, a old school... I mean, what do you think, Stuart? Nod or... or, or... It's a bit high, but yeah, it's all right. I, really got a... I could appear in Project Potemkin in this. What do you think? Looks good. Yeah, put you back in the red then. <laughs> uh, <sighs> I'm gonna regret this. I can tell I'm gonna regret yeah. this. Yeah, you guys are making work yeah. for me. Line, yeah. line, Samuel line, likes line, playing line. dress up, so making work for you. Yes. I'm not making work for you. I've got to it tonight, haven't I? You're making work for you. <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm going to put one of these on, actually. Well, you can I don't do even know if they can hear me. I don't know if they have your pieces on. Actually, on. Well, that's not one. true. I have, have, I have, like I say, I have well, got a past the main one at home. That's a high-end one. You guys so are you're... listening to me, and that's okay. Yeah. It's all obviously not quite this, right. Look at this crazy mind. costume fitting live. <laughs> and film costume <laughs> fitting. Well, no. Okay, this is kind of fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the strap. I forgot about the strap. The important strap. Yeah. Well, it kind of looked better with it, like... You half undoing it. It does look, look, look kind of often cool. look better like that. I don't know. I still like my greys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You suit the greys. Else it's, it's fitted for you. But actually, I red is my color, so you know. Yeah. Earth colors. Is red an earth nice. color? Anyway, I'm good with earth colors. Browns and greens yeah. and blues. So what, Me what too. do you guys think of, of Nick? From, you can see him in uniform right now on the screen. I mean, not quite as neat. Uh, but it's cool. backwards on screen. Guys, tell us. Guy, NPDX PDX puts in five dollars. Uh, you may have already talked about this, Nick, but what are your favorites? <laughs> what are your other favorite fan films? Oh yes. And I should note this is Scott Cummings. <laughs> oh hey Scott. Actually I had already been asked that, hadn't I? And I didn't what? answer, so apologies. Um hey Scott, how are you doing? I was just I had a text from Maurice this morning. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, um what's he saying? Uh, probably not yeah so my favorite other fan film so definitely on my, high on my list is starship exeter the savage empire followed by starship exeter the tresorian intersection oh, i think the director on the tresorian intersection did a very good job Who's the director on that? scott cummins oh. <laughs> i feel like now you're, i feel like you're pandering now yeah no actually so, I mean, no, my favorite i i do genuinely all history for me is the set. yeah, yeah i do it's genuinely the best thing i've ever seen in my life man. oh ever Tresorian yeah. intersection is for me really one of the best fan films out there and it still holds up really well and i know that last act had a very torturous route to production um and i saw some early cuts of it but yeah it is still one of my favorites 
The other one is, um, and I actually have forgotten the title of it, and I was talking about yeah. earlier. It's Starship Farragut one, and it's the one where Carter's meets his father again. Um, and that is actually one of my favorites. There's far too many hidden frontiers to list because they are one of my favorite productions. They don't have the highest production you know, um, standards. Also, it also ages worse than other films. Absolutely. Better um, time. But I think I, I really enjoyed their storytelling. And, you know, I've got a massive soft spot for them because I've got so many friends on that production. And Rob Caves is just such a genuinely, mm -hmm. genuinely nice guy mm -hmm. um, who just enjoys enjoys fan, enjoys making fan films and enjoys Star Trek and enjoys playing in that sandbox. Um, and he genuinely does it because he enjoys it. Mm -hmm. No other reason. Um what else? Those are my well, big ones. I mean, a film that came out a couple of years ago called Temporal Anomaly. That was that was quite good. I haven't heard of that one. No. <laughs> I've heard that one's kind of crap, actually. Mm. Really? Yeah, I hadn't heard it. It's, it's so crappy that even the Star Trek writers will never use the you know, term Temporal the, Anomaly. <laughs> there's loads. There's loads and loads of fan films that I really enjoy. I mean, I really like the Avalon Universe fan films, um, and I've enjoyed Continues. I've enjoyed Phase Two. I wouldn't say there's any fan films that I don't like, but obviously I have my favorites. And I do have a big soft spot for the Farragut because, again, <laughs> teams, because again, they're just a really nice group of people and I've enjoyed their work. Uh, it, it's really hard to pick favorites. Mm -hmm. Oh, Stuart knows that yeah. too well. Yeah. But and I, 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 you know, I, I, I enjoy the work I do. Um, I don't by any means think it's amazing work, but I enjoy the work I do and I get a lot of fun out of it. Stuart, call out for a final Super Chat goal. Let's see if we can get a oh, couple Oh, I do love our bloopers. Yes. Good note to end on. Last Another... Th oh. I mean, this is pretty much okay. how we spend most of our shoots, to be fair. Yeah. Well, I want to say, guys, another... I want to say 70 would be great, but we're not going to get that. So another 30 in Super Chats would be fantastic. Yep. Um, and let's try to get more likes. Let's try to get 75. If you haven't hit like yet, hit that like button. Show your love. Uh, for Nick and for all fan films in general, because this has actually been a very interesting discussion. So and he's in a brand, literally a brand new costume, a world exclusive that I forced yeah. him into live on screen. Yeah. Hey, you mentioned Intrepid. Yeah, I suppose. Okay, I'll take the blame for that one. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. When you go to my office and my studio, it's like, well, there's a costume, there's a prop, there's a phaser rifle, there's a disruptor. Well, to be fair, my office is like that as well. I know. I, I, I guarantee. You didn't I'll... dress me up. I didn't I'm, dress me up when yeah, I visited. I'm not sure if my office is. But... I think my office is slightly less tidy than this one. Um, which... <laughs> That's an insult, probably to both our offices. <laughs> yeah, but my office is not tidy. My, your desk is a lot tidier than my well, desk. Well, yes. It's a lot tidier than my desk. They do say a tidy desk is a sign of a creative mind, so I'm going to go with that. It just I, 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 <laughs> I did try with my desk, and then I gave up after a while because it was just like a bomb site. Uh, yeah, I loved how when you were talking the other day and you just pulled out, you, just, you went backwards like half a step, <laughs> turned, draw, three tricorders. Yeah, <laughs> they are. It's like yeah. arm's reach. Yeah, and that's... Okay, hold on, hold on. Stuart, what's your nearest startup prop in arm's reach? In our only one arm's reach? You've got something... I got a bunch. I got com badges. I can grab any well, com no, badge. Like actual prop from the show. Like a... Oh, from... Well, I mean... Got... There we go. Yeah. See? Tricorder. Arms reach. Boom. And what have you got from arms reach? <laughs> also, a tricorder. In arms reach. See? It's, every star for the office needs a tricorder. So. Yes, you, and you get neither camera you've got that on. <laughs> you really failed both cameras. I saw it. I, saw I it failed on. both oh, yeah. cameras? You did? failed both cameras? There you go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yes. That's the wrong tricorder for that uniform. Actually, no. crossing the streams. <laughs> well, no, he's gone back in time. That'll do. Oh. I'll take that excuse. Yeah. Forward in time, get the tricorder. No, well, I no, came no. Back, I in back in time, time with the tricorder. Like, yeah, but I feel like I need to write a film with you on both Intrepid and TOS and this. Oh god. Because you got TOS, haven't you? I do have TOS actually. Yeah, I've yeah. got. I've got a. So I um, fan film I've got a red. Si I've got a red engineering costume. I actually do have a blue science costume. Mm. I need to shorten the sleeves on that one. Yes. I didn't make mm. either of those. Have you ever made a TOS? No. Mm. Nah. 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 Phoebe <laughs> Seymour says, "Have you ever been stopped by non-Trek aware individuals asking what you're doing filming in the woods?" <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> when we shot our second film, 
there was like ugh, there was a really we shot a lot of our first and our second film up in a place called Glendall, which is about an hour from Dundee, and it's just a beautiful, fairly pristine area. But there's a hotel with a bar and a bunkhouse and stuff there, and we we filmed up on the hillside over two days, and then there's an old quarry there and stuff like that. So we filmed there over about two days and we stayed overnight in the bunkhouse and some of the hotel rooms so you know we filmed one day and then we came back and we went to bed and then we got the next day and we had breakfast at the hotel and then we got into costume and stuff to get ready to go out to you know the hillside and then people started noticing walking us walking through the hotel I and mean, it's just a small hotel um you know everybody started asking what are you doing what are you doing and then asking us to post for photos with them you know, we had a Klingon and a Romulan and a Vulcan and, you know, various Starfleet uniforms. And um, it, it was interesting. It was fun time. It's not the first time. It, it wasn't the last time that happened, but it was probably the most, um, the most. We had the largest group that we'd had at that time then. Yeah, an impressive group. We saw. I think there was about 11 of us. And a phaser rifle. And a phaser rifle. Yeah. TNG phaser rifle. So it was a pretty good group. That was Transitions and Lamentations. Uh, Duty of Care. I really, I really do like this bright one. bright orange uh, in, in a, in a one. Yeah, I think that's more colour correction than anything. Well, actually, that is a... Diff yeah. It's the only shot I had that fit him. Yeah. He's a big guy. So any last Superjack guys, or we'll uh, all head out and uh, get some sleep and film my day four, your day two and a half. Guys, mm. he's here live in studio. This is your job. Another nine likes would be. I mean, awesome I, too. I, I'm, I'm not that exciting, so you know. <laughs> I've no, no, I'm just. Kidding. You know, it's not like I'm. Um, I don't know, Alec Peters. <laughs> I don't have that kind of fan base. I don't have a fan base. You have a base. Hey, dude, they're all here. <laughs> you have a base and you have a fan. Just my not combined I, I i am a fan i'm just a fan and i make this films for a bit of fun and with hopefully lots more coming soon as in yeah, yeah nice. well hopefully yeah because now that well i don't want to say covid's like kind of gone because it isn't it's still an issue here and we we have patients in icu at my hospital um so it, it's still an ongoing thing but it's certainly not as much of an ongoing thing as it was I'm hoping things are heading in the right direction, but we don't really know at this point. So what I would say is just people, you know, be careful, um, take precautions if you can. I'm not going to say people should get vaccinated, but I would certainly suggest it's we not. Have been, so. I have been, and I would suggest it's not a bad idea to get vaccinated. If you can, not everybody can. Um, and I'll now end this um, public service announcement before somebody gets annoyed. You actually work in the NHS, though. So I do work in the that. NHS. Well, I also have to be very careful what I say because I work in the NHS. Oh. But um, in, Well, you're in Rathacon. You yeah. Those, what uh, can I say? Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, you know, look after yourselves, people, because it is important, and there is still a risk at the moment. And we are three more dollars, guys. That's it. Three more. Three, three more dollars. Yeah. Come on. Three more dollars for Trek Come cards. on, guys. They've earned it. Sam has earned it today. He has worked his ass off. And he's also worked my ass off. And um, that's going to get dodged if you keep going. <laughs> yeah. It's just, well, uh, it's course, two dollars. Well, to, considering yeah. the conversations we were having earlier with Marcus <laughs> going um, to his this room was fun. for Thanks some for loan time. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I knew it would be problematic, but I thought you could act around it. Turns out you couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did act about it, act around it after it got over corpsing. Mm. Sorry, hi, Stuart. Hi. Oh, Maurice says, hi, Nick, my ears are burning. Hey, hi, Maurice. How are you? Look why I put him in. <laughs> yeah, I was talking about your work, actually. Well, peripheral. Well, actually, yeah, I was talking about your work because Maurice was absolutely essential to production on the final act of um, Tresorian Intersection. Oh, that's my shot. <laughs> That is your shot. So, you know, and I have to say that Maurice has been, again, talking about team. Maurice is not part of my team, but Maurice's, you know, advice over the years has been absolutely, absolutely, you know, um, priceless. I'm trying to think of the right words, and it's been a long day. Apologies. Mm -hmm. But Maurice's advice is, and his friendship has been absolutely priceless over the years. And, you know, some of the stuff I've done has been done as well as it has been because of advice I've had from Maurice, certainly from story making and from editing choices sometimes as well. Um, you know, I don't, we don't always agree. Um, 
but Marisa's advice is always valuable and always valued. And um, I'm really grateful that he's taken the time to offer it. And anybody who is making fan films, I know some people think Trek BBS is a bit of a rough audience, but if you're looking to make fan films, if you want good advice, go to Trek BBS, go to the fan films group. Maurice has got a thread there where he has advice for people about filmmaking, stuff like that. Really, that thread is invaluable. And the amount of work he's put into that thread, you know, you don't get advice for that for free. And he knows what he's talking about. Well, you he do. Knows his, well, you do. That's but the point, you do. He knows what he's talking about special. and he knows his stuff. And we got some more super chats because yeah, I mean, one more dollar would reach next girl. One more dollar, literally one more new dollar. <laughs> one more dollar would be great. One <laughs> dollar. Chat slot as well. So if you want to snipe it, yes. guys. Ozzy Madero still five dollars and says here. That's the five dollar goal we wanted. And then David Geit puts in five dollars. Have you kept in contact with HF Productions? I have kept in capped. I have captain. I have kept in contact with HF Productions. Absolutely. In fact, I need to record. Mm. I'm off on annual leave this week and next week. We're using this well. I need to record <laughs> some dialogue for Rob Kays for his mm. animated HF revival, oh. which he's working on at the moment. And that is hopefully preparatory to, and there's no secret here because he had said about this online himself, a live action revival of Hidden Frontier. So, you know, I mean, we still keep in touch. We're still friends. As I said earlier, I've made a lot of friends through the Hidden Frontier productions. And one of the reasons I have such a soft spot for their productions is so many of my friends in the fan film community and in the Amer in America come from that production. So, you know, and I've just got such good memories of working from them. Yes, they're not the most polished productions under the sun, but they have so much heart and they're such... And I, I say this anytime anybody asks me, they're such a nice group of people. Um, and anytime Rob Caves messages me and say... I, I want to do this. I mean, I'm there. I'm there. Rob asked me to do something. And if I can physically be in and involved, I'm in. Because anytime Rob Case asks. Yeah, Rob just There's has to ask. There's a bromance, and I can hear the gushing here. The He's just a nice guy. I know He's he just is. a nice I know guy. He is. He, is the, he <laughs> is the nicest man in fan films. Literally, he is. He doesn't, cool. you know, he, he, he doesn't play any games. He's not in it for fame. He's not trying to make a big, you well, know, big a... himself up or anything like that. He doesn't put himself in his fan films as the as the lead, yeah. um, like most of us do. I don't. Um, you know, I mean, he 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 stays in the background, and if he does appear, it's like a little cameo, and he's just a nice guy. Stuart, last super chat. Who is it? Who won it? Super chat is Squadron Course with one dollar by the looks of it. So, <laughs> all right. So say thank you, Squadron Course. Thank you. What's that name? Squadron Course. Thank you, Squadron Course. You are a gentle person and a oh. scholar. I say gentle person because I have no idea what gender you are. And I am politically correct. In Wrath and Khan uniform. Um, In a Wrath and Khan uniform. Cool. Thanks, Stuart. <laughs> I guess Thank I'll... you, guys. It's good to have you here, Nick. For sure. Uh, it, it's good to have you. And I'm sorry if I'm not that exciting to your, you know, to your um, viewers, but... I... I can't wait to like sit down with you in person again. I, mean, I did meet you in Birmingham, but we didn't have much of a chance. It, it to was chat, very so. brief, and yeah, it, I mean, it'd be nice to actually properly meet up, and you know, yeah. if only we could have all gone have to a, Vegas this year. Drink, yeah, which we were supposed to. <clears throat> yeah, I know. It's disappointing. COVID. Yeah. Matt Boardman with a two dollars snipe. So there you oh, go. Matt Boardman okay. is the last. So thank you, Matt Boardman. Uh, I don't know why I'm saying thank you. It's not my channel, but you know. Mark Lawrence is here with five dollars. Oh. Gotta do one before I can't. Love your films. Ah, oh, thank you, Mark. So you have Mazda. He's another Federation president. So you have Ozzy and Mark. Yeah, thank you there. so much, Federation president. Yes, and go. Matt has a, has a special sniper rifle that he takes out and he shoots. I mean, he always misses us, luckily, but he does snipe often. Yes. Okay. Does that make sense? <laughs> no. As in, he snipes the last super chat. He snipes uh, to get in at the last minute. Okay. So he often starts a sniping now over. I understand. He will, so if you picture a hill above my PCs, they're sniping, I, 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 I and they keep missing. I don't do live Matt, streams. But Matt I don't keeps get this. <laughs> I'm an old guy. This is this is you know. The, I'm, yeah. No. Some of them like squadron course. They snipe from the grassy knoll. Like yes. one dollar right there. See, and there's assuming, more than one shooter. And some of these rocket launchers, and you can imagine go, <laughs> but they always miss. But they always try to hit, and they always try to snipe each yeah. other. Whoosh. Over my head, over my balls. I mean, one, once we had a sniping war with because one because one you can put one dollar in just to get that snipe, right? Okay. We had about thirty one dollars to the point we couldn't even save them quick enough because they just kept. I mean, it's the same. People like, have people. sniping wars over giving you money. 
I'm but in the, the wrong business. But it's one dollar. That's the joke. As low as you can go. But it's just the just the, just the anarchy. Hey, of it. a dollar's still a dollar. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. But it's great. We just until until YouTube gets a hold of it, and then it's seventy cents. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. Capitalism. Oh wow, that is a that, that is was Lee Andrew. Pointy. Oh my god, that is a weird shot. Um, yes. Tune in tomorrow. I'm sure for some will do Stuart. You and me. The boys are back. Yep. Yeah, I'm not going to sing Boys Are Back in Town because that's normally what I would do there. But I'm I will not to. be back. I will be on a plane. Actually, I'll probably be on off the train. plane by then. Maybe I'll be on a train by then. Yes. Yeah, I will be on a train by then. After my nice. after my short number four and five being filmed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. And on that note, thank you for watching. Tune in tomorrow, and we'll see you later. Thank you again, Nick, for joining us. My and, pleasure. Uh, Live. Thanks for having me on, yes. and thank you everyone for tuning in. <laughs> Um, for my not so interestingness. And I'm sure we'll see you again at some point. So. I'm sure you will. Anyway, guys, see Live you later. Captain Foley signing off. Commander Cockenzan. Captain Hunter.